Yeah, fellas, it's Raptor Jesus again. And I'm here with uh, my first episode of Workshop in which I'm going to talk about wealth and coinage and uh, fantasy role-playing games, especially old-school ones. I here displayed a, a various collection of some coins I actually just found cleaning up some old parts of my house. Uh, I always like collecting coins. I think they're really cool. My dad got me onto it. Uh, he's a big coin hound. And despite that, I always find it uh, sometimes tedious in games where you have so many different values of coins. But I still like to simulate that because, you know, no one likes to count beans when they play these games. Especially new players. Uh, me, I'm kind of used to it because I brought up on all of this stuff over, like, you know, decades. So you build up a, a tolerance to the silliness sometimes, I guess. Uh, so... Something I've been thinking about is actually using... Uh, the various uh, styles of coin you usually get in old school games like copper, silver, gold, electrum, platinum, and actually treating each of those as from different countries or even sometimes different eras. Um, I've kind of based all of my currency off of silver rather than gold, but I think this applies to anything really, and you can do different things like you know, Gold is more of a dwarven coinage, and platinum you can treat as like that's dragon coins. That's from a, a lost empire of draconic kind or something. I always like doing something like that. Uh, you know, when you fight the dragon, like it's always a special event, so it's always nice to have some dragon coin going in there to have a bit of ancient history. And then its value is really just because it's a collector thing, you know, so you should always, uh, I think, uh, include some sort of money changer or collector of historical artifacts in your starting towns. Uh, I think it, you do have to have some suspension of disbelief when you're playing these games, but when you kind of patch up those areas that are lacking, it adds, you know, the players question less when there's more illusions to bedazzle them. So I always like having silver as the more standard. This is what everyone works with because, you know, again, I'm talking about like suspension of disbelief. I'm going to talk about history of coinage. Is most people back in the day they had silver. There wasn't gold. Was like a special thing. That was more reserved for like uh, the higher tiers of society. You know, most peasants could survive off a of copper or silver uh, a week. So you start like rating things and how many days of survival does this bring me more than like, oh, I just got a silver piece. You look at something as how long you can live. Even pieces of bread, uh, equipment money, but money wasn't as important, it was more of a trade thing. But I always like to spin it that adventurers, you know, they're just a bunch of stupid oafs that come into town carrying a bunch of stuff, so you, know, you be sure that that uh, bread maker is going to start charging gold pieces for it rather than silver that it's actually worth. So it's always something interesting to do is that, you know, the peasants that rely on adventurers because they bring in so many rare, rare materials and also a lot more treasure into town that they can use in the trade with, with various merchant guilds in order to get uh, higher tiers of goods and quality. So I think also over time your, your community should grow. So I hope you guys have good gaming and uh, keep your shield arm strong.